So I remember being in a uh, political leadership class at uh, the University of Louisville. And we're studying all these dead white men. And that's what, you know, the history of Western civilization is just the history of dead white men. They go ahead and they steal the Egyptian cultures, the Greek and the Roman cultures. And then they pretend like they are the ones who started it all. When really they're just a byproduct of guns, germs, steel, and kind of being at the right place in history at the right time. And also a penchant for barbarity. The ability to take you know, what, what isn't theirs to take other people's lands and to say this is ours. And unfortunately, Christianity is supposed to be a civilizing force. Uh, but I think civ uh, Christianity is a civilizing force for the dumb and the weak. Because it uh, uh, tells them to be humble and to be happy in their lowly place in this world. When uh, Nietzsche says that it's... um. You know, we all can be supermen and superwomen and we can be the best of ourselves that we can be. So, Frederick Douglass is a badass. The reason why I mentioned that leadership class, it was the Mitch McConnell Center. And, um, and I enjoyed the class, but I felt so fucking nervous every fucking time I went there. Just like a bunch of rabid dogs. Just like a bunch of motherfuckers that just want to kiss their masses butt. Um, instead of actually having a true conversation and they resented me because I had an effect, I had an indelible effect and, you know, the, uh, um, the, the professor liked me, but at the same time, he, um, he didn't know, you know, he wanted me to conform to, to his ways. And so essentially I just, uh, Guantanamo obeyed him. The first thing I said was, I'm adamantly anti-war and I'm still adamantly anti-war. If we're going to be an empire, we uh, do the humanitarian missions and shit, but frankly, let's bring all of our boys home. We got the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. The United Nations is a pretty good organization. It gives the United States veto power, so it gives us a ton of power, you know, uh, but it doesn't have any teeth unless I'm... Right. So... Frederick Douglass, I was going to talk a little bit about his life and just read some of these badass quotes that he has because I just keep thinking about this one quote over and over again. And it's talking about um, when you quietly submit, uh, you, you will find the level of injustice that people will accept. So Frederick Douglass, his life as a slave, I remember reading some of his uh, earlier works. And it was, um, it says he was born into slavery in Maryland, Talbot County, on the shores, eastern, on the state's eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay, named by his mother, Harriet Bailey. The plantation is located between Hillsborough and Cordova. His birthplace is likely his grandmother's shack east of Tapper's Corner and west of Tuckahoe Creek. Years later, after escaping to the north, he took the surname, surname Douglas, having already dropped use of his two middle names. So the exact date of Douglas's birth is unknown. He later chose it to celebrate on February 14th, Valentine's Day. The exact year is also unknown. On the first page of Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave, he stated, I have no accurate knowledge of my age, never having seen my authentic record containing it. He was of mixed race, which likely included Native American on his mother's side, as well as African and European. He spoke of his earliest times with his mother. The opinion was whispered that my master was my father, but of the correctness of this opinion I know nothing. My mother and I were separated when I was but an infant. It was common custom in the part of Maryland from which I ran away to part children from their mothers at a very early age. That's what slavery would do. You have to smash the man and the person inside of them, and the best way to do it is to tear the family apart to uh, get the children away from the mothers and fathers so that way you know they um, they have to fend for themselves and when they're fending for themselves it's best to just comply with massa instead of uh, retaining any type of humanity that you might have had inside you and so Frederick Douglass Frederick Douglass is a badass um, in that Mitch McConnell political leadership class we were studying a bunch of dead white men, um, you know, Machiavelli and um, others. <laughs> Machiavelli was a big one, Marcus Aurelius, 
And, uh, and I remember the professor was sitting there sad and saying, I think Western civilization is is being washed away, and he was real sad about it. But frankly, that's that's not the case. It hasn't been the case for a while. I think Western civilization will kill itself if it continues to be barbaric and imperialistic. People want to say, why do you want to change system? You know, the like the fish in the aquarium. You want to get out of the aquarium? You want to live in a different place than the aquarium? No, not at all. I just think that uh, we can do something better and we can do something different. So instead of going around exploiting and manipulating people and causing the ire of the world, um, we could we could be better in terms of you know treating others as equals and not bombing and killing their children. That seems to be a uh, um, a good way to live. So, you can read more about Frederick Douglass' earlier life. Eventually, he becomes a great orator. He, uh, he starts traveling the world and starts talking about, and here's actually some quick quotes about poverty. You want to talk about, um, you know, Western civilization being swept under the rug? Western civilization, you know, the Catholic Church, they're murdering peasants and killing people. You have the Black Plague. You have... Uh, the serfs, and you have the um, um, the landless peasants. What, what do they call it? the serfs and the um, the lords and the serfs? There's something else. There's a, the serfs and something else. Um, but but essentially, they're slaves. They were slaves on the land, and they weren't living on their own land. They were living on someone else's land, and they had to do for the rich and powerful. Um, and giving part to the rich and powerful, you know, of, of what they earn to the rich and powerful. So Western civilization, if you want to look at the princes and the, the princesses and the kings and queens and the generals and the military folks, yeah, there's some successes there. Um, but if you want to sit there and say that Western civilization has succeeded, I don't think you could say that. Uh, the, there's lots of people that died on the streets during those plagues, the bubonic plague, and it was done intentionally. The Irish uh, had the potato famine, and it was created by the rich. You know, people talk about overpopulation, and they want to fucking say fuck. You know, there's the weak and there's the strong, so let the let the dumb weak die out, so that way we get more of the earth for um, ourselves. And um, and that's just not you know. That success, that success to bomb and murder and let people starve to death. I mean, at the very least, we could take care of our own, right? So we're the wealthiest nation in the world. You have the wealthiest making record profits, and the poor folks are slipping on through the drain. Pope Francis says, and Pope Francis is kicking ass. He says, today we also have to say, thou shalt not to an economy of exclusion and inequality. Such an economy kills I beg the Lord to grant us more politicians who are genuinely disturbed by the state of society, the people, the lives of the poor. So I think that's a, that's a good um, commandment to live by. Capitalism Unchained, the six-step process to wipe out the poor half of the U.S. So wipe out, is that to let them slip down the drain or to actually elevate them? I believe he's trying to, to elevate them. To deplete the world. So, uh, recent analysis has determined that half of America is in or near poverty. This is confirmed by researchers. Emmanuel says, and Gabriel Zuckman, who point out the bottom half of the distribution always owns close to zero wealth on net. Hence, the bottom 90% wealth shares the same as the share of wealth owned by the top 50 to 90% of the families. What can be described as the middle class? The United States has one of the highest poverty rates in the developed world. It's much worse since the recession, especially for blacks and Hispanics. From 2008 to 2013, the stock market, which is largely owned by 10, uh, just 10% 10 of Americans, gained 18% per year. Well-to-do stockholders get capital gains. Tax breaks include a carried interest subsidy that Robert Reich calls a pure scam. Carried interest is just total scam, so... People on the stock market and Wall Street is, you know, they're making good earnings. The uh, the very wealth, the 1%, are making record profits. 
And the way they're doing it is by cutting labor costs like the Mitt Romneys of the world. They'll buy up some flagging um, industry, take their pension, sell out all the capital, fire all the people, and then start anew uh, with cheap labor and, you know, a, a different name. And then that's supposed to be, hey, that's capitalism. That's the way it works. There's a, you know, that's that's the trick, right? Just cut cut a person in half and be like, well, that's, that was the trick. I cut labor costs, you lost your damn job, and I made all the fucking money. Bottom half of America relying on regular bank accounts earn about 1% on their savings. Strip away their income. Earnings due to workers for the years of productivity have been withheld by people in power. Based on inflation, the minimum wage should be nearly three times its current level, which would make it $21.00. Investment report from J.P. Morgan noted a direct correlation between record profits and cutbacks in wages. So that's exactly right. Why are they making record profits? Because they're cutting labor costs. You're getting cut. We hear occasional news about job growth, but low wage jobs, seven to fourteen dollars an hour, which made up just one fifth of the jobs lost to the recession, accounted for nearly three fifths of the jobs regained during the recovery, and it's getting worse. Nine out of ten of the fastest growing occupations are considered low wage, generally not requiring a college degree, including food service, health care, housekeeping, and retail sales. Among rich countries, according to the OECD data, the U.S. is near the bottom in both union participation and employee protection laws. There's never been a single fucking job where we've talked about solidarity and being around others. Never once. In any job that I've had, I've had shitty jobs everywhere. If we unionized, if we stood together, at the very least, you get solidarity. And uh, if you don't get better wages, you get a better working climate. You get, you know, friends and buddies. But instead, we're wage slaves, we're cheap labor, and we're pitted against one another. And that's why they're bleeding us dry. That's why we have um, the shock doctrine. Whenever there's a crisis, then the capitalists come in with their Chicago boys and they shock the economy. They make the economy scream. Just like Henry Kissinger did to Chile. Make the economy scream. And so if the Mitch McConnells get their way, which it seems like that's what they're going to do, that's what they're going to do. They're going to make the economy scream. They're going to make us all into cheap, cheap fucking labor. Just because you're a fucking racist, Kentucky. Fucking racist, fucking dumb, poor, Kentucky. It's the chickens voting for Colonel Sanders. How much longer before the chickens vote for Colonel Sanders until Colonel Sanders chops the fucking head off you and devours you? No, I don't want to steal. I don't want to take nothing from nobody. I, that's what they're fucking doing. They're taking all the food, all the resources, all the wealth, and they're eating it all for themselves, and they're throwing all the extra in a fucking landfill and letting everybody else perish. If you got enough food for 10 people to eat, you, you don't need to be fucking eating all that goddamn food. You don't need it. That's that's enough food for 10 motherfuckers. And like I said, you know, there's there's lots of starving people in Africa and in um, Russia. You know, there's just the whole world. There's a lot of people, you know, what, 8 billion people or something and counting. And, and overpopulation is going to be an issue that needs to be confronted. Not with murder and death and destruction, um, but with high-rise skyscrapers, self-reliant places. I mean, just drive through. There's so many places where there's just so many plains and flat land. So to make the argument that there's not enough land for people, that's bullshit. So, but at the very least, we can take care of our own. Why do we have homelessness on our streets? Why do we have poor people? You know, barely making it. The wealthiest nation on the fucking planet has poor people and homeless. Capitalism has failed, and it's failed ridiculously. It's fucking failed. Take away their homes. A study by the National Low Income Housing Coalition concluded that an average American renter would need to earn nearly 20 bucks an hour just to pay a two, for a two-bedroom apartment. In no other state, the report says, can a full-time minimum wage worker afford afford a one-bedroom or two-bedroom rental unit at fair market rent. Over one-eighth of the nation's supply of low-income housing has been permanently lost since 2001. Little wonder that so many people are homeless. Over 600,000 on any January night in the U.S., tens of thousands of children, tens of thousands of veterans. 
and that one of every five suffering from mental illness. Hit them with fines, fees, and fleecings. The poor half of America is victimized by the banking industry. We focus on the financial sector. 95% of America's economy is based on speculation. The financial industry is making a killing. And the manufacturing base is taking a fucking uh, um, uh, 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 shellacking. Or a, they're taking a, I was thinking of a different word though. A, a bludging. They're, they're being bludgeoned. The manufacturing base is being outsourced. And so that's what Germany does capitalism and Germany does socialism better than the United States. They do capitalism and they do socialism better. So they get paid more, their people are happier, have a higher standard of living. Norway is kicking ass, they have a higher standard of living. And so therefore, we can have a social democracy. We can have a, a system which actually cares about their people and has lots of exports. You, by educating people, by getting them understanding economics, the exports, that's how you make stuff, right? That's how the economy is good, is when you can make a bunch of shit. You can make a bunch of shit, you can sell that shit, and then you can make some money, right? So that's good That's good for the GDP, and that's what the entire the economy is based on. Macroeconomics is based upon having a high GDP, making a bunch of shit. My problem with uh, measuring the uh, economy in that way is what about the distribution? You can make a bunch of shit, but if only the fucking wealthy is getting it, that ain't helping nobody. That doesn't mean it's a good economy. It's a good economy for the fucking... You know, uh, factory owners and the fucking ultra elite who usually sit on their fat fucking asses not doing shit, bossing everybody else around. But we can control the means of production. We can start our own businesses. You know, the workers are the ones that keep the world working. What the fuck you need a CEO for? What the fuck you need a boss for? You can't work out your own schedules. You can't work out who does what, when, and how to get, you know, make an efficient type of system. You can't figure that shit out. Yes, you can. You can figure it out. So, give the means of production to the workers. Or get the workers to take the means of production. The factories became the centers of the revolution in Bolivia. And people say, well, what if you, the owners just blow it up? Well, you're going to be killing people, you know? Is that your solution, to kill people? By rental centers that charge effective annual interest rates over 100%. By payday lenders who charge effective annual interest rates over 1,000%. And by the bur burgeoning prison industry, which charges prisoners for food and health care, phone calls, probation, monitoring, and every other goddamn thing they can fucking think of. They're more expensive than a luxurious hotel, and they don't give you none of the fucking quality. You sleep on cold-ass fucking floors, and they all fucking prance around like they're some badasses. On top of all this, bubbly TV personalities rave about all the lottery money just waiting to be taken home. Poor families account for most of the lottery sales. Criminalize them. Matt Tabies. Recently published book, The Divide American Injustice in the Age of Wealth Gap, contrasts the targeting of the poor for trivial offenses with a tolerance for the architects of billion-dollar financial crimes. The U.S. court system is flooded with cases for minor infractions, including loitering charges rem reminiscent of the infamous black codes of post-slavery years. The buildup of arrests has added one out of every three U.S. adults to the FBI's criminal database. The poor are criminalized for lying down or sleeping in public, for sharing food, for simply having nowhere to go, for collecting rainwater, for dancing. Most insidious let their children suffer. The U.S. has one of the highest relative child poverty rates in the developed world. Almost half of black children under the age of six are living in poverty. Nearly half of all food stamp participants are children. The number of homeless children has risen by 50% in less than 10 years. Early education is certainly part of the solution for numerous studies have shown that preschool helps all children to achieve more and earn more through adulthood with the most disadvantaged benefiting the most but even though the US ranks near the bottom of developed countries in the percentage of four-year-olds in early childhood education Head Start was recently hit with the worst cutbacks in its history Mitch McConnell's in office he wants the corporations to get all that they want how they made the economy scream in Chile they sold all the assets and told the government to have the least amount of capital possible so sell the schools, sell the roads, sell the bridges, sell whatever fuck you got. The only really government that Milton Friedman wanted was 
uh, court system to be able to allow the businesses to negotiate with each other, right? If there's a problem, the court system can be an arbitrary sort of impartial body that, that can figure out the problem so that way everybody's playing by a fair set of rules. So these uh, so-called libertarians who who seem to be close to anarchy, but they're not. They they want enough government so the corporations can run roughshod over everybody. They're not for people anarchy. They're for corporate anarchy. They're for the businesses to fuck over as many motherfuckers as possible. Americans do not care about human beings. They don't care. They don't care about the torture. They don't care about the bombing. They don't care about the murder. They don't care about the war. They don't give a shit about human beings. They are psychopaths who cannot empathize with anybody else. And so without any type of morality, what Americans are doing is they are doing whatever the fuck they can do and whatever they can get away with in order to make ends meet. And the good people in a world of evil will perish. So unless you start to be cutthroat yourself, then you will not be able to survive. You will not be able to live and do well. So, you want to know why we got violence in our streets? We got so many disposable citizens deprived of a disposable citizens deprived of a living wage, jobs, and a meaningful education, and equal treatment by our system of justice. Rebellion in the form of violence is not hard to understand. The privileged members of society would lash out too if they were stripped of everything they own and tossed into the fucking streets. There's also 10 myths debunked, and so basically when people are saying single moms are the problem, absent dads are the problem, black dads are the problem, poor people are lazy, if you're not officially poor, you're doing okay, going to college, get out of poverty, we're winning the war on poverty, the days of old ladies eating cat food are over, the homeless are drunk, street people, handouts are bankrupting us. So in 2012, total welfare funding was 0.2%. 47% of the federal budget. Less than one half of the fucking percent. Motherfuckers say, I go to work so millions can fucking live on welfare. Really? You go to work so the, the half a percent that comes out of the federal budget, right? First of all, you're not making millions of dollars. How much of your fucking money goes to the federal government? You know? So for motherfuckers to see, to, you know, even working class people are feeling fucking entitled. Even working motherfuckers are out there thinking that they're the one that's financing. People are sitting around. That ain't coming from you. Most of the fucking money of the tax dollars is coming from the rich. Proportionally speaking, the poor pay more than their fair share than what the fucking rich are paying. But half of the tax monies, because 1% of a million dollars, you know, is... Is a um what is it? It's it's a thousand bucks or ten thousand dollars. So that you know, one percent of a million dollars is way more than one percent of a hundred. So you know, when you get um, a ten thousand dollars versus a buck, that you know, the wealthy are paying more of the total share of taxes, but not proportionally speaking. They're only paying one percent, so they're paying you know. And actually, the poor will be paying more percent than the, the wealthy. They got the lawyers and the loopholes and all the other shit. So now, your fucking penny that went to the fucking federal government doesn't go to pay one fucking, you know, half a cent to the food stamp industry. Kiss my ass, working class motherfuckers. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Shut off your fucking Fox News, dumbass motherfuckers. Yeah, good job. You're working. You're doing a job. But who you working for, who you making money for, and they paying you. Don't act like you're some benevolent motherfucker doing, you know, you doing right. Go get a job and make your living. Uh, but don't act like you're fucking paying for the fucking wealthy or for the fucking, you know, housing, the public housing or the food stamps or any of that shit. Uh, you're paying for the military industrial complex. You're paying for the fucking social security. You know, you're paying for... Your, your, your penny isn't paying for much. Your penny is paying for very, very little. So <laughs> get over your fucking cells. Um, that's class war right there when other working class motherfuckers want to attack, you know, other working class motherfuckers. So the share of elderly single women living in poverty jumped 31%. Um, just all, you know, it's, it's, uh, poverty is fucking kicking everybody's ass. So, this is supposed to be about 
Frederick Douglass. Um, I wanted to read his speech, but I went on and on about the fucking poverty because I think that's actually really important. So I'll just leave it with uh, the quote, which I really liked about Frederick Douglass, and then I'll you know title this about the poverty in America and uh, come back with some Frederick Douglass quotes. But the um, the the Frederick Douglass quote that I really like is this: is find out what any people will quietly submit to, and you have found the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. And these will continue till they are resisted with either words or blows or with both. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. In the light of these ideas, Negroes will be hunted at the north and held and flogged at the south so long as they submit to those devilish outrages and make no resistance either, either moral or physical men may not get all they pay for in this world but they must certainly pay for all that they get if we ever get free from the oppressions and wrongs heaped upon us we must pay for the removal we must do this by labor by suffering by sacrifice and if needs be by our lives and the lives of others <laughs> such a good quote they, um, I like that entire paragraph, and I want to read the entire speech that it's from um, with the next video. But just that first part, find out what any people will quietly submit to, and you found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. And they will continue to their resist it with either words or blows or with both. And so that's, you know, I, I essentially, I, I, I'm glad that I went to work at the, um, at the timber mill. And fuck all those people that didn't want to have me work with them or whatever. But frankly, at the timber mill, the dude started being an asshole. And I had a chance to speak up for myself. But, you know, I had a fucking racist piece of shit standing over my shoulder. A bunch of dumb Uncle Tom sycophant kiss-ass motherfuckers that don't know how to stand up for themselves. And so when I was talking about the railroad ties being sold to the company, I said, what companies did the railroad ties get sold to? And the asshole was sitting there saying... Dumb, short, fucking retarded, you know, dumb motherfucker. Yeah, he could, like, put together some shit and works, you know, but, like, he's a short-ass piece of shit. He's a tyrant. And so when he has a bunch of motherfuckers kissing this fucking ass, he just thinks he's a fucking badass when he actually he's just a fucking bitch. So, um, uh, if you don't let me think corporate, if you don't let me, in, in, you know, include me in the discussion of how to best manage the company and make it more efficient because you're wasting a lot of labor cost with just sweeping the fucking place off. There's a guy at the end of the assembly line that's getting the wind blown right on his fucking face. What would it take to put a fucking, you know, a, a, a third wall up on that fucking building? It wouldn't have took shit. It would have took solidarity. It would have took us working class people giving a shit about each other. But since we all got to have a job and we got to do what the fuck massa tells us, and if we, without a fucking job, we starve to death on the streets, then uh, they they don't even give a fuck about their own humanity. And uh, Douglas says something about that too, about how you can't, how can you fight for a man that won't even fight for himself? So um, when when I asked about the railroad ties, they want to tell me that Obama's a nigger, and uh, you know that reminds me of the Malcolm X joke about what do you call a black man? What does white people call a black man? with a PhD, a nigger. Obama's not a nigger. You know, even black folks recognize that Obama is sort of um, not a magic negro, but he's different, right? Cat Williams was like, this nigga here, and where did you get him? He don't owe nobody $200. He ain't got no tattoos, no baby mamas coming out the woodwork. This nigga, where did you get this nigga here? Where did you get him? And so for them to say that he's a nigger, no, he's not a nigger. You're wrong. They're um, uh, Hazelwood, Jim Hazelwood. Uh, but if you don't allow me to think corporate and to participate in that type of thinking, then you're going to, you know, force me to be a union guy. And then if I can't union uh, unionize folks, then um, then then my time um, has has come. Right, my time is is um, is done. So, this uh, Frederick Douglass quote, he said this in 1857, before the Civil War, the significance of emancipation in the West Indies, which is um, interesting. He's talking about emancipation in the West Indies, so in the Caribbean islands, um, which there was a lot of sugar plantations and, um, you know, the other tobacco and some other, other shit, but really the sugar plantations is what I think of with the West Indies. 
He made a speech about it in New York, August 3rd, 1857, collected in a pamphlet by author in the Frederick Douglass paper, Series 1, Speeches, Debates, and Interviews, Volume 3, edited by something, something, something. So, so yeah, the um, find out just what any people will quietly submit to, and you found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. So since the American working people have no morality, they are obedient, they don't give a fuck about truth or justice, they don't know how to talk to each other, we're not learning democratic structures or practices, we're not learning how to debate or how to talk to each other, how to tolerate each other's opinion, to let the minority have their say and the majority get their way, we're not doing any of this shit, none of this shit is coming to pass, we have elections. That's the last bastion of democracy that we got. And even with the elections, with the voter ID laws, they're trying to make it harder for people to vote. They're taking away the very last motherfucking thing, the very little thing we have, right? Once a year, the people get a right to choose their masters and tyrants and those who can oppress them. Every year, they get that choice. And that's it. But frankly, when it comes to politics, if that's the only fucking thing you're doing is voting, which a lot of motherfuckers ain't even voting, you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. You're not reading. You're not paying attention. You're not talking about the issues. You're not organizing. You're not mass mobilizing. You ain't doing shit. You ain't doing a goddamn thing. You're an immoral fucker. And either you're an immoral bastard CEO who's exploiting the shit out of workers, or you're an immoral fucking worker who's letting the fucking exploiters exploit you and since you're a little bitch you're a little fucking piece of shit bitch willing to get fucking raped over and over by your fucking bosses that's the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be opposed upon you as long as you quietly submit to that shit you find out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be upon uh, imposed upon you and so I, I don't hate Ferguson I don't hate the protest of Eric Gardner what I do fucking hate is all this outrage about the two police officers, but no outrage when black people are getting shot up all over across the United States. And don't think that black liberation is any different than white liberation. There's no fucking difference. We're all the fucking same. So, you know, uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So when uh, white folks start to protest and stand up for black folks, you will also see a better system happen in the white communities as well. The problem, you know, there is a racist strain in the fucking police force. Clearly there is. Um, Eric Garner was like a grandfather. He was a hero. He broke up the fight. Mike Brown, I, I don't know. You know, I've heard actually some black folks tell me that he was a little bit of a bully. Um, so it, it's less, you know, it, he didn't deserve to die. He didn't deserve to get murdered. That's the end of his life, and that's it for him. But the um, the the problem isn't so much a racist society. It is racism is a big the triple headed monster was racism and um, poverty or consumerism and militarism. That's the three evil headed dragon that MLK wanted to slay. But what I'm saying is. I've seen a corrupt criminal justice system. You're guilty until proven innocent. If you don't have a lawyer, you don't have any representation. If you don't know the process, you could get freaked out. Someone grabs a hold of you, throws you in a fucking pen instead of you saying, well, throw it to the jury. Let's see what the jury has to say. You know, and um, instead of like going to your council meetings or going to your uh, county meetings or getting the information that you actually need to understand the issues that's going on instead of doing those types of things you know we're allowing these motherfuckers to do whatever the fuck they want to do and so therefore this quote just exactly it's the American people find out just what any people will quietly submit to and you found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them the Iraq war we saw protests we stood up Right, but you got the war criminals walking around acting all cocky like they the badass motherfuckers, right? They don't give a shit. We submitted to that shit, including the Democrats. Hillary Clinton voted for the Iraq war. And uh, Barack Obama tried to do something. Now they're saying, oh, look at the vacuum that you're creating. You can have, you know, a new world order, right? 
Um, right now, it's the American Empire, and it's been World War III with the American Empire for decades. So the New World Order would be, you know, play fair, uh, do unto others as you have them do unto you, right? Which actually, you would think Christians would be for, but actually most Christians are for the torture. They're in favor of the torture. More Christians, a poll come out that said that Christians are actually okay with the torture that they did, even though Jesus Christ himself was tortured. But with the United Nations, that's a better outfit because the United Nations is created so one sovereign nation doesn't attack another sovereign nation. And we can have trade and we can have, you know, sort of uh, better talks and negotiations with one another. But as long as we are going around imposing our will by the gun, you can't be surprised when people fight back with the same violence that was being put upon them. In Mao Zedong, he says, all power comes out of a barrel of a gun. So, we'll do uh, more Frederick Douglass coming back.